Important Features in OLSR Ad Hoc Routing Protocol In this video, we will dive into the working of the OLSR routing protocol with a focus on how MPR selection works. Let's get started. OLSR stands for Optimized Link State Routing Protocol. It is a proactive routing protocol, meaning it maintains up-to-date routing information for all nodes in the network by continuously exchanging control messages, regardless of whether a route is currently needed. In contrast, reactive routing protocols only discover and establish routes when they are required for communication. They do not maintain routing tables or exchange routing information continuously. Instead, when a node needs to send data, a route discovery process is initiated to find the desired path. In OLSR, only a subset of pre-selected nodes, called MPRs, multipoint relays, is used to perform topological advertisements. Control messages, such as those containing routing information, are broadcast and forwarded only by MPRs. This reduces the number of transmitter nodes, minimizes overhead, and avoids unnecessary reception of messages by nodes. This approach also mitigates the well-known broadcast storm problem caused by excessive broadcasting. Each node in an OLSR network periodically broadcasts hello messages to its immediate neighbors. These messages contain information about the node itself and its direct neighbors that is one-hop neighbors and are used to identify one-hop and two-hop neighbors, that is, neighbors of neighbors. The goal of MPR selection is to ensure that all two hop neighbors of a node can be reached through at least one of its MPRs. Node U has one hop neighbors, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, which it can reach directly. Among these, C, E, G, H, and I are selected as MPRs, ensuring that all two hop neighbors of U are covered. The same scenario is available as an example in NetSim. Let us look at that. Click on the Examples panel on the left in NetSim. Navigate to Mobile Ad Hoc Networks, expand the section, and click on the Main 8 OLSR example. This will open the NetSim design window with 20 nodes placed in the network. The grid size of this network environment is 1,000 meters by 500 meters. All 20 nodes in the network are automatically connected via an ad hoc link. The ad hoc link icon in NetSim is a logical link and it conveys the fact that all nodes are part of the same wireless network. This example is based on the reference, analysis of the multipoint relay selection in OLSR and implications. The paper shows a network designed for the following constraints. Node U is the central node, with nodes B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I as its immediate neighbors. These nodes are not within range of each other. Nodes J and K are immediate neighbors of node I, but are not within range of each other or any other node. Node T is only within range of node H, making it an immediate neighbor of node H, but it is out of range of any other node. Node S is within range of nodes H and G, making it an immediate neighbor of both, but it is out of range of all other nodes and so on. The connectivity can be seen from the blue dashed line. The network described has a unique spatial configuration where specific nodes have limited and defined connectivity ranges to ensure they only connect with specified neighbors. Achieving these neighbor relationships is not possible in 2D due to overlapping ranges that may connect additional nodes. By using a 3D network configuration, we can meet the connectivity constraints described. The exact X, Y, and Z coordinates of the nodes are provided in the documentation accompanying this experiment. Having set up the network, we next view the node configurations. Go to the Properties section on the right side panel, expand the properties, and navigate to Network Layer. The routing protocol configured is OLSR along with its specific parameters. Hello Interval, Refresh Interval, TC Interval. These parameters are set to default values, but can be customized by users as needed. All other layer properties are also kept at their default settings. Now click on the ad hoc link. Under link properties, expand the properties where users can configure medium properties. In this example, 
The channel characteristics are set to path loss only, and the path loss model is set to range based with a range set to 130 meters. Next, click on the plots slash logs tab in the right side panel. NetSim provides various inbuilt plots and logs. Under the additional log section, we have enabled the OLS RMPR log. Then, click on the configure reports tab. As you can see, the packet trace option is enabled. Now, click on the run icon from the quick access bar and run the simulation for 50 seconds. Once the simulation is complete, you'll see the results dashboard. Navigate to the logs tab in the dashboard and open the file OLS R neighbor MPR logged CSV. Wait for the Excel sheet to load. Here's what the log file contains. Time in milliseconds. The time at which the MPR set for a specific node is updated. Device name. The name of the current device for which the MPR set is calculated. Device ID. The ID of the current device. MPR nodes. The MPR set selected for the device listed in the device name column. One hop neighbors. The set of nodes that are one hop away. Two hop neighbors. The set of nodes that are two hops away. Now, filter the device name column to you. In the log file, we see that the one hop neighbor set selected for node U includes E, I, B, F, C, and G. At the very beginning, the two hop neighbor set consists of node P and N. While there are other nodes through which node you can reach P or N, node E is the only node through which both P and N can be reached simultaneously, giving it a higher degree of connectivity. Therefore, node E is selected as the MPR for node U. This is reflected in the log file. After the second iteration, the two hop neighbor set consists of P, N, and L. The one node through which you can reach P and N is E, and the only node through which you can reach node L is node C. Therefore, node C is added to the MPR set. This can be seen in the log file. As we scroll down further, we observe the one hop neighbor set, two hop neighbor set, and MPR set getting updated over time. Eventually, the MPR set stabilizes and includes C, I, G, H, and E. From theory, the MPR selection occurs in two stages. In the first stage, MPR nodes are selected to cover the isolated nodes in the two-hop neighbor set of node U, such as nodes J, K, T, R, Q, L, and M. Nodes I, H, G, and C are chosen as MPRs during the step to ensure these isolated two-hop neighbors are covered. In the second stage, the process considers the two hop neighbors of node U that remain uncovered, specifically nodes P and N, along with the one hop neighbors that have not been selected as MPRs, such as nodes B, F, E, and D. The selection focuses on nodes with the highest degree of connectivity. For instance, node E is chosen because it covers both nodes N and P, whereas nodes F and D each cover only one two hop neighbor of node U. This approach to MPR selection is based on maximizing the coverage of two hop neighbors while minimizing the number of MPRs by prioritizing nodes with a larger degree of connectivity. Nodes L and M are reachable through node C, so node C is selected as the MPR. Node B has no connectivity to any other node. Node N can be reached through node E, which also connects to nodes O and P. Therefore, node E is selected as the MPR. Since node P can be accessed via node E, node F is not selected as an MPR. Node G connects to nodes R, Q, and S, giving it more connectivity, and is thus selected as the MPR. Node T is only reachable via node H, making node H the MPR for reaching node T. Nodes J and K are accessible through node I, so node I is selected as the MPR. The log file shows the MPR set selected for node U. It is a C, I, G, H, E. NetSim's MPR set exactly matches with the MPR set obtained from theory in the paper. Thank you for watching the video.